Hi, my name is Andrew Thorpe. I'm a consultant urological surgeon and I work at the Freeman Hospital, Newcastle upon Tyne. We're one of the larger teaching hospitals in the UK. We've just had our CQC visit and been given an outstanding outcome. So I'm very pleased to be able to talk to you about the Goliath study today. The clinical implications for our practice are the NICE guidelines. Uh, mean that we can broaden our practice quite considerably. It means that we've got an extra modality to treat men with. Previously on our unit we've used the Holmium laser, Turis and more recently the Eurolift but now we've got another technology which is going to enable us to treat men, uh, especially older men who've got catheters in, who were perhaps have been unfit for other surgical modalities and also in younger men um, in whom uh, we would have been worried about affecting sexual function. So I think uh, it increases our armamentarium and gives us extra technology to treat males with. The way that the new NICE guidance will affect the way that we uh, treat our patients with BPH is that we'll be able to treat far more of them as day cases the green light technology is ideal for day case surgery. It's a quick procedure with minimal morbidity. And as I'm sure you'll know, uh, with the new tariff guidance that's just been pu published, uh, we can claim a much higher tariff for best practice uh, if we do procedures as day case surgery. So I think um, it will enable us to put a lot more patients through as day cases, claiming a much higher tariff and thus claiming a much higher income for our unit overall. Hello, I'm Gordon Muir, Urology Consultant at King's College Hospital. I specialise in male lower urinary tract symptoms and andrology and I've been using laser prostatectomy for over 20 years, and in particular the green light system since it was introduced in the UK in 2003. I've been using green light laser for 13 years, although that was originally with the very early version of the technology and the XPS is greatly superior to the previous versions. In our practice at King's and also in my private practice, uh, we manage more than 90% of our operations as daycare. It's important to realise that this isn't a highly selected patient group. We operate on the very elderly, anticoagulated patients, large prostates and also those patients who have other serious comorbidity and we feel the safest place for these patients is usually in their bed after surgery. In terms of setting up a practice for day case prostate surgery it is important to realise that one has to have skilled staff, good anaesthetists for a lot of elderly men who may have comorbidities, uh, good nurses who will work with you to get the process up and running and well-informed patients and it's not appropriate to try to do 84 year old men in retention at 5.30 on a Friday afternoon so there may be some reconfiguration of the operating list to happen but if one does that as I said Kings we manage more than 90% of our patients as daycare without any patient selection. Well, what the guidance says is that if green light laser prostatectomy using the XPS system is used in the UK primarily in daycare, it can provide a TURP equivalent operation for men, but they'll be able to go home the same day, they'll have quicker recovery, and it should be cost saving for the NHS. And indeed, the higher the day case utilisation, the higher the cost savings should be for the NHS moving forward. In order to try to improve efficiency, the idea of the best practice tariff is to pay more for procedures which are done in less time. And given that Greenlight XPS is one of the very few procedures which genuinely can become a, done as a day case, it should allow many more procedures to be done. The other thing which is important is that until recently, a lot of hospitals and units seemed uncertain as to whether they would be reimbursed if procedure was not nice approved. 
So despite the very large amount of evidence we have from randomised trials and other papers showing the excellent efficiency and safety of XPS, we now have nice guidance which will guarantee that the procedure will get paid for. My name is Andy Thomas and I'm the Consultant Urological Surgeon at the Prince Esther Wales Hospital in Bridgend in South Wales. I was Joint Principal Investigator of the Goliath Study and I'm the Chairman of Prostate Cymru Charitable Trust. The Goliath study was a prospective randomised trial of Breedlight XPS versus TURP. Each centre could decide whether they did a bipolar TURP or a monopolar TURP based on the surgeon's preference. When we, when we performed the sub-analysis, uh, there were nine centres that used bipolar TURP, five used solely bipolar TURP and four used bipolar and mono, monopolar TURP. To try and produce an unbiased comparison of Greenlight XPS and bipolar TURP, we identified the centres that performed bipolar TURP only, which were five centres, and four centres performed monopolar and bipolar TURP. We identified 53 patients who underwent bipolar TURP and used a system called propensity score matching to identify PVP patients that would match to those TURP patients. The results of the study showed that in terms of IPSS and QMAX, Greenlight XPS and bipolar TURP had similar efficacy with no significant difference at two years. This was also the case with safety. However, there was a benefit for Greenlight over bipolar TURP in terms of length of catheterization, type of stable health status, length of hospital stay, and the suitability for daycare surgery. Over 30% of Greenlight laser cases could be performed as a day case versus 6.7% for bipolar TURP. In the last five years, uh, two technologies for treating BPH are emerging, and that is bipolar TURP and Greenlight laser XPS. Uh, both these techniques have been shown to be efficacious and safe but there's a clear advantage for green light laser in its suitability for daycare surgery. This is very important to, to hospitals because inpatient beds are becoming a rare commodity and any treatment that facilitates daycare surgery uh, will be beneficial for the health service as a whole. I've been a convinced user of green light laser for years and I've been very happy with the performance and the safety of the XPS version. I'm delighted now that the nice guidance will allow us to roll this out and I think with the right teaching and mentoring and the right support uh, a great number of urologists will find that they'll become very happy using this technology to the benefit of their patients and hopefully to save the NHS a bit of cash as well.